Good morning, friends. Uh, today, the 57th day of the invasion of Ukraine by Russia, and we are still here. We, you are still here. You are continuing to pray. You're continuing to help raise up prayer. You are believing for God's best in the middle of some of hell's worst. Praise God. Thank you. Thank you for continuing to share these, to like them, to comment, to comment on each other's comments. All of this stuff helps to raise up prayer. And uh, we are still, we are every single day overwhelmed by just the awareness of what our prayers together are accomplishing. Because again and again and again, the what God has done in the midst of hell's worst uh, defies uh, description. So as always, we've got some difficult things to look at, some hard places. There are horrible, horrible things that are happening. And yet in the middle of all this, God is on the move. And we're going, so we're going to encourage ourselves with what he has done. We're going to celebrate the victories exactly according to the prayers we prayed. And then we're going to turn and we're going to look at some hard things. We're going to pray powerful, powerful prayers. I've said this many times, you can't care for every person. You can't care for it all. We just don't, we have limited emotional bandwidth, but more than that, we can't pray effectively for everything. It, it ends up just being buckshot and it, it just goes everywhere. It accomplishes nothing. So what I want you to do is listen with the, uh, the ears of the spirit for the things that God is putting on your heart to pray for in the middle of all this. Ask him to show you the one or the two things to pray for and to pray effectively for and you double down on those. And when you hear that for yourself, you type it in. And if you see someone typing the same thing that's on your heart, man, that's just confirmation of what God's saying. You jump in and tell them and let them know. Does that make sense? All right. So let's start out by talking about the things that are happening that are incredible. First off, um, here we are. This is the third day of Russia's attempt to uh, move forward in Donbass. Um, uh, again, uh, I've, uh, if you look at this map, uh, this is the map of the territory. Uh, this is the whole area of Donbass here, um, Donetsk and Lugansk. And um, this whole area is the area that Russia has been attempting to invade. They've been pushing so hard to take. And man, they're, they're, this is the areas that they control. And, uh, and this is where they're trying to... Oops, I got it upside down. No wonder you can't read it. <laughs> I was wondering. It didn't make any sense to me either. So there it is. There's Donetsk and Lugansk. And up here is Kharkov, and they've been pushing in, and they have no, they're trying to push this way, and they're having no success. Um, let me let me just nail first off. Just in the last 24 hours, the Ukrainians have shot down three jets and uh, Sukhoi 25 in Donetsk, and two um, that were shot down near Izum, um, as well as a, um, a a helicopter near Pavlivka and another one near Malinkovka in the Zaporozhye region. So across the front, they're taking, uh, Russians do not have military hardware to spare. They're running out un, un, unimaginably. If anybody said that in two months they could go through the entirety of their arsenal, nobody would have believed it. But they're they're using stuff up so fast that it, they just, it's it's un, it's unimaginable. Praise God, they're they're taking things out. They did now, um, and there's been a counteroffensive um, near uh, Marinka in um, in uh, Ukraine there in Donetsk. They've where the Ukrainians have uh, reported heavy enemy losses. They're continuing to press forward. They're not not only not giving ground, but they're pushing back on the Russians. This is awesome. One of the things we've been praying for consistently is Mariupol. Russia had determined they were going to crush. They declared it over and over again. We will absolutely destroy the Azovstal uh, steelworks to the ground where somewhere maybe a thousand Ukrainian fighters are holed up with a thousand uh, elderly and, and uh, a weak. And um, they decided they were going to crush them. Well, Russia... Honestly, I think part of it is they've run out of resource. They, the amount they've expended is, is ridiculous, but they have declared they're not going to continue. They're actually going to blockade Azov Steel, Sol, um, uh, Steelworks. Praise God. That means that, that even though they are starving, they are not going to be attacked. This is a huge answer to prayer. 
So now what do we do? We take the encouragement we get from answered prayer and we turn it toward um, things that haven't happened yet. So what are we praying for, for, for Azovstal? That the Ukrainians would be able to reach them, resupply and evacuate them. They would somehow get a breakthrough there, but also pray that the Ukrainians who are there would not just sit back in their blockade, but would actually strike back. One of you all, I forget who said, let this be their Stalingrad. In Stalingrad, uh, the Germans had totally destroyed Stalingrad and yet the people continued to fight back and actually eventually drove the Germans out, and that was the beginning of the end of German occupation of Russia in Soviet Union. Let this be Russia's Stalingrad. Let it be. That's a really good prayer. These are, listen for these kind of prayers. This is good. All right, well, one of the things, too, is that the church, we've been praying the church to rise up, to take their place, because the church can do what nobody else can do because we have resources nobody else has. We have the Holy Spirit. We have joy. We have hope. We have courage. We have we are mem- we are citizens of another kingdom, and so we're able to bring resource from that kingdom. And so uh, we uh, just got a message from our uh, friend Vladimir and Lilia in Nipra, where they've been, you know, as you know, helping refugees. They've been, a couple days ago, they were, They've been able to serve Russian prisoners of war. Unbelievable. Well, today they are on a on a serious mission. They need your prayer because they are, they've been asked to help evacuate wounded soldiers. So they're going to the front, pray for their protection. They're putting together a convoy and they're gonna get the wounded out. Pray for their protection. But this is what the church is supposed to do. The church is supposed to run to the battle, not run and hide. This is... Let us demonstrate to the world a courage that comes from heaven. Pray for the church to continue to rise up and to take their place at the front um, and bringing heaven to earth, even in the midst of hell. Oh my goodness. Woo. Praise him. Um, so uh, another thing is is that the we've been praying that the prime ministers and the presidents of the nations of the world would come to Kiev because when they see it with their eye, their humanity is causes compassion and causes them to say absolutely no, we cannot step away from supporting Ukraine. We've got to back them, and that's what's happening. De- the the president of Spain, I mean the prime minister of Spain and the prime minister of Denmark are in Kiev today right now, and they are overwhelmed by the atrocities that they have seen the evidence of they've they have they've gone i believe to Irpin. uh they have they are um, uh, just by seeing the destruction with their own eyes it's one thing that's on a tv screen it's another in person and they're like this they can we must never abandon ukraine and we must support them utterly to give them the military aid they need to destroy um uh, Russia in the, is uh, their occupation in Ukraine. One of the things that Boris Johnson has said is that Ukraine not only must it help be helped to push Russia out, they have to be given the amount of military aid to assure that Russia will never again attempt to take one inch of uh, Ukraine's territory. These are strong words that 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 as they get backed up with strong weaponry and and uh, aid. Another thing that is can increase increasingly apparent as you hear this in the in the voices of the leaders of Europe is that they are recognizing that is fundamentally terrifying to be held hostage by Russia as far as oil and gas. And they are doing everything they can to get off of Russian oil and gas for their own sakes. And that is that is good, that is awesome. Czech, Czech and Slovakia and Poland have been leading the way And Czech. What they have said is they are going to, pro- the Czech Republic is going to, is providing tanks. They're the first ones really to do that. They're providing tanks. But not only that, they're providing tank parts, but more than that, they're providing tank repairing facilities. This is really huge because the West has been so low to give heavy uh, weaponry to Ukraine. They have a limited supply and repairing it is essential and they're doing that. Praise God for that. Another thing is that the U.S. has provided a plane parts. They're super, no, we're not giving them planes. We're just giving them plane parts. But these plane parts allow the Ukrainians to repair 20 planes and get 20 planes back up. And listen, they've, they've been operating with 50 some, I don't even know the accurate number now. So 20 it is, is huge. And they continue to deny Russia air superiority. Unbelievable, unbelievable. Nobody could have called this. All right. I mean, it's 1,200 airplanes for Russia and 70 for, for Ukraine. And here we are today. Oh, 
Praise him. All right, so another thing is the UK is sanctioned, has released a new uh, set of sanctions, sanctioning particularly military officers. This is important because the military officers have been told, if you go to Ukraine, you're gonna get rich. And in fact, that's why all the looting and the horrible things were done in occupied territories around Kyiv because they have been promised. These are people a lot of times coming from villages. They don't, the standard of living is extremely low and they're going into suburban areas of, of Ukraine which are relatively wealthy and they're just they're 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 being told this is how you're going to make your money so particularly for the the senior officers they'll what they'll do is they'll tell the younger younger officers and say you have to bring in a certain amount of loot for me and what what are they going to do with that where how are they going to store that well as the sanctions you know go against these officers they start to see limited options and that's good but also on that list was a guy by the name of Alex Pirov, who is the oligarch who is over Luke Oil, one of the largest oil companies in the world, billionaire who has a uh, close friend of Putin all the way down. He uh, was on that list. And also, if you remember yesterday, Putin said Luke Oil and all these other companies can't be traded on the New York Times Exchange or the or on in um uh, in, in Great Britain or elsewhere. And so he he's taken hit after hit in the last 24 hours to the point he's stepping down as president of Luke Oil where most of his money is. Man, this is awesome. Again, as the oligarchs are rendered, they've, their support of Putin was based on getting stuff and they're losing stuff. Same for the military types. Putin's power base dwindles radically. One of the things too is yesterday, I didn't even have time to, I didn't put this in, Ru um, Russia FSB has, uh, has, um, has um, uh, arrested the head of Lugansk uh, People's Republic. When, you know, they're supposedly trying to help the Lugansk people. Well, they've arrested him as if he was a citizen of Russia because of his failures in Lugansk, as if everything that happens in Lugansk is a Russian plan, which it is, which they say it's not. That's awesome. Again, truth revealed. Um, uh, Girkin, Girkin, uh, is, uh, uh, they also call him Strokov, in, uh, who's the warlord of Donetsk. He continues to come out with a narrative that is contrary to what Kremlin wants, and yet uh, these divisions we've been praying for in, in the power structure continue to cause problems within Russia, and so we continue to pray for that. Um, um, the UN, we mentioned this, the UN has been so silent. The general secretary finally made this wussy kind of, let's have an Easter uh, ceasefire, you know, for four days for Orthodox Easter this weekend. And Ukraine said, okay, well, now it's on Russia. Russia has tried to act. They keep saying, well, we have given so many proposals to the Ukrainians and they just reject them all. And, you know, we're done, we're done. Well, no. No, they haven't. They they fundamentally haven't because the Ukrainians said we cannot negotiate from the end of a gun. You got to get off our territory. And um, but again, when rush when the world provides an olive branch to Russia and they knock it out of your hand, that reveals again the truth of what's actually happening. Uh, Latvia and Estonia have their parliaments have agreed that they have voted and said yes, this is genocide. What is happening in Russia? Again, why is that important? Because it helps to provide legal ground to to um, for international intervention on one side, but also for international uh, um, repercussions for Russia, especially on the backside of this invasion. That they would that those responsible will be held accountable, and that the European community is not just interested in a ceasefire, but they're actually interested in justice. That is very, very, very important. Wow. So now that you're encouraged, now that you're seeing God on the move, oh, another thing that the, I'm sorry, I forgot this, is that Russia, I'm sorry, the United States and Great Britain, but all throughout Europe, they are providing massive amounts of artillery and that are, the, particularly the American artillery is vastly superior to what the Russians have. That is super helpful because the Russian forces are not able to actually engage. Um, the, the Ukrainians for a number of different reasons. So they have to lean on artillery to try to destroy the Ukrainian positions. But the Ukrainian positions are incredibly well defended, well protected. And so they're not working. But the reason they have to depend on artillery is they simply do not have the morale to fill tanks. 
People, when, when you have 10 man pads or 10 stingers for every single tank that Russia has in the field, you can't convince guys to climb into a metal box with a bullet's bullseye on their head. They're, they are they are struggling with morale like never before. And that's why there have been no move there have been no successful movements on any front except on the far east, far eastern part of 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 the front. Um right about here. Um it's a, a place called um Pap Papasso. I'm where am I here? Um, yeah, Papasna. Papasna, they've, it's a town of about 20,000. They're fighting in the streets right now. But that thing that they've pushed forward is only 10 kilometers wide and 10 kilometers deep. It's nothing. And so um, they're, they're not making any headway. They did. Now, they are shelling Kharkov hardcore. Um, please pray for Kharkov. Amazingly, Kharkov's a city of a million people. But only 30% have left. Only 30% have been evacuated. Now, our folks of Vladimir Lili have helped some of those people evacuate, but 70% are saying, we're not going. Now, some of you ask, why did not people leave? Some, it's because they believe in Ukraine and they want to stand. Others, because they don't have the means. Again, it was mainly women and children and elderly who've, who've, who've left Kharkov. But Russia is attempting to bomb Kharkov out of existence. They're trying to do another Mariupol. Pray for Kharkov. They'd be protected. Now, the, at one point, they were somewhere today between 80 and 90 percent encircled and, and, and besieged. That has been pushed back to a straight line away from Key, uh, Kharkov, but they are attempting another encirclement from the east. Uh, there is a, there is a, right now, they are attempting this. Pray that they get stopped and again, that the people be protected for the amount of shelling that's happening in Kharkov of the fact and of civilian targets the the fundamental uh in a relatively small loss of life is is just simply a testimony to jesus um also uh pray for germany germany keeps they are the slowest to the party they're the last of the party and they keep they keep saying they're going to help and then they back off and they they were going to provide heavy weaponry well now they're backing off again Pray for them. Pray. The, the entire German people, as a people, have said they want to provide heavy weapons to Ukraine. And the government's like, oh, I don't know. Right? So pray that the, the German people as a whole create real pressure on the German authorities to actually get in line with the rest of Europe and actually backing Ukraine. Um, uh, pray for deportations. It... Over half a million Ukrainians have already been deported to Russia. 134,000 of those from Mariupol alone. Guys, don't believe any of the, the stuff. These are, they've either tricked people or they've literally left them with no choice. Or at some points, they've just sit, literally just arrested them. When they get, when they get taken, what happens? They get taken to filtration camps where they're, they are, uh, they are interrogated, sometimes tortured. Then they are shipped. Uh, sometimes separating ch uh, children from their families, children to orphanages, families, and they're sent to all over Russia. Pray that they, A, don't get lost, P, that, uh, P, two, that they're protected, and three, that they are returned. Pray for them. Pray. Also pray for the refugees. Five million, over five million now, refugees have fled Ukraine. Many of them, uh, just pray for their protection, that they do not be taken advantage of, that their food they're provided for, the shelter, but also that they don't get lost, but that also they're able to return. Whoo! Pray for the church. Pray for the church to continue to rise up and take their rightful place, revealing the kingdom of God in the middle of hell, revealing love, revealing joy, revealing peace, revealing, you know, having supernatural wisdom of where to go and when to come. Also, pray for, um, uh, pray for, um, uh, pray for the Ukrainian uh, uh, church to demonstrate what love looks like so that the Ukrainian people will not be consumed by rage, but will actually continue to extend love and hospitality and grace to the captured and the uh, surrendering Russians. Wow. Praise God for, for what the church is doing. Now, pray also, though, there, the Wagner group is on the ground. 
anywhere between 10 and 20,000. Let's pray it's 10,000, but pray no more of the Wagner group comes, but also that they get wiped out. The Chechen army was the first one that we were really worried about. And they, they I mean, really bad, just like the Wagner group, they got taken out in north of uh, Kiev. So let's pray for that to happen again. Some fundamental destruction of those Wagner forces. Uh, continue to pray for logistics. Um, man, one of the beautiful things that's happening is the Russians cannot find ways to get fuel to the front. The reason is the fuel has to come in tanker trucks. Nobody wants to drive a tanker truck. It's They don't get paid hardly anything, and all it takes is one bullet and boom, and they are they know they have a target on their back. That's why they were unable to get all those supplies to Izum because they just kept blowing up fuel truck after fuel truck. If without fuel, tanks don't run. Pray that those get shut down. Oh, um, pray. Um, you know, just continue to pray uh, for for that. That logistics would result in a bloodless. Uh, a resolution that that people would that that unable to get supplies, the Russians would simply stop. Uh, again, morale is at an unbelievably low level. The reason they were so rabid to invade north the north of Ukraine is because there was there were riches there by Kiev. Listen, there's no riches left in this area for them to get. There's no carrot for Russians risking their lives. And so continue, they, they simply don't have the, the bodies to put into tanks and into planes. So pray that it continues, that that just gets shut down. Again, we're praying that um, anti-aircraft uh, positions uh, get taken out and that they're able to bring in some heavy duty uh, 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 bombing and drones to take out more and more of these uh, uh, tanks and equipment when they're not being manned, because we're praying for this, we're praying for the Russian lives as well. But finally, what are we praying for? We are praying for all of Ukraine to be set afire with the gospel. When they see the church, I've said this, I, as I was crying out to the Lord about Russia years ago, I said, what happened with all the Russians who gave their lives to the Lord in the 90s? Where are they now? And the Lord said this to me. He said, they came into the church and they did not see the bride of Christ as she had been advertised. They saw something else. And he said, when Russia sees the bride of Christ as she truly is, as I've made her to be, the Russian people will rise up and run to her. Guys, that's the same for Ukraine. Pray that the bride of Christ in Ukraine will rise up and demonstrate a fundamentally different kingdom, kingdom of light and power and joy and of a sound mind in the middle of anxiety, terror, and hell, and that they would say, do you want some? That the people of Ukraine would come rushing to the bride of Christ and be transformed, that all of Ukraine would be filled with the fire of God, and then from that, they would actually, the Russian soldiers would be set aflame by the love of God, demonstrated by the Ukrainian church and they would be set on flame as missionaries into the fields of Russia and that Russia and Belarus would be transformed by the gospel of Jesus Christ and that all the world would come to know him through what he does in Ukraine, Belarus, and Russia. Guys, this is the glory of God. We got to pray for the more that he has for them. But guys, I say this every day. I'm going to say it again. You matter to God. You matter. It doesn't matter that you're not, maybe you're not in a bunker somewhere. It doesn't matter you're not on the front lines. It doesn't matter that you haven't suffered the same level of loss. Your, what you're facing matters to God. He has more than enough. He's, he's God. He has attention for each one. He knows how many hairs are on your head. Listen, he loves you and he's for you. If you're overwhelmed with fear, confusion, doubt, and despair, a uh, feeling invisible, listen, he sees you. And I'm going to pray for you right now that you would experience, man, I've got a buddy who's going through some really hard times right now. And I, as I prayed for him, peace came on him in a moment. That's what I'm believing for you, that God would cover you right now in Jesus. You would bless this, each of these, each of us would experience your goodness and your love and your power in, in the sound mind that you would drive anxiety and despair out of the hearts of every person listening and that we would know your love. If you, if you realize that you're just overwhelmed by your life, you can't do it. Listen, that's why Jesus died on the cross. He said, if you give me your life, I'll give you mine. I will give you my life, my power, my hope, my joy, my peace. 
And so if you realize you need that, just say right now, Jesus, I can't. I give you my life. I can't. I need your life in return. Fill me with your joy. Fill me with your hope. Fill me with your peace. Show me your glory. Show me your face. In your beautiful name, amen. <laughs> so many of you are sharing how you've been transformed by what is ha what th our, our times together, and that is amazing. We've got some groups online that are starting up with some of our team. You've seen several of them on here. Suzanne Roberts, uh, Gary Phillips, Mariana Sikowska, Heather McMurray, uh, Shannon Lewis, uh, so many others. If you would like prayer, just simply say, need prayer, and they'd love to pray for you. But also, you can join one of their the online mentor groups that we're doing through Zoom. Uh, if you're interested in those, simply say, men's group, if you're a guy, or women's group, if you're a lady, and they'll get back to you. Um, Jill Hawes or Mariana Sikowska will get to you the information and the links of how you can get involved with that. But we would love to continue just to serve you in any way that we can. Uh, again, if you, want to if you want these in written form, go to ariselife.org slash Ukraine, and there they are. You can read them, but also you can scroll to the bottom of the page and right-click on uh, any date and save as a PDF and print it out. And finally, uh, if you want to help uh, give uh, financially to Ukraine, uh, we've been able to send, I, I believe, $93,000 to date. We've got some more ready to go. Thanks to your gifts, uh, again, they are able to go to the front lines and get people out. They are able to, they're able to serve ev wherever they can. And so because of your gracious gifts, and so if you would like to give to that, arisealife.org slash help Ukraine. Uh, uh, there's a button on the Ukraine page. Uh, you just click on that button. It will take you to a secure site where you can give. And uh, so we're just so grateful to you all. Uh, as um, one of these days, I'm probably gonna try to do an AMA. Some of you guys have had questions. We try to answer them, but uh, we'll try to share a little more about who we are and why are we doing this. And so if you've got questions, uh, just be on the lookout for that. And we'll try to answer your questions about Ukraine or anything else. So we love you guys. We're so grateful for all the prayers for us and the encouragement you give. And uh, be blessed. Take care.